Now, truthfully, I wasn't going to make this video, as personally, I think this is a bit of an odd matchup. On one side, we have the recently announced Sigma 90mm f2.8 DGDN contemporary lens, and in the other corner, we have the Sony 90mm f2.8 macro. But seeing as so many of you have pestered me to test these two lenses head to head, I guess here we go. Comparing the similarities between these lenses makes for pretty short reading. They're both 90mm primes with a maximum aperture of f2.8. They they both have a textured metal focus ring. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's about it. I did warn you at the beginning of this video, these lenses really are two very different beasts. The Sony is noticeably larger and heavier than the Sigma, but that's because it's a macro lens, whilst the Sigma has been deliberately designed to be a compact prime lens for portrait and street photography. In terms of features, the Sigma also includes an MF to AF switch and a manual aperture ring that clicks at every third of a stop. This dial can also be set to auto mode, denoted as an A, so that the aperture can be adjusted using the back of your camera instead. In comparison, the Sony has a wealth of advanced features, including a focus limiter switch, a customizable AF lock button, as well as built-in optical stabilization, which can also be used in tandem with your camera's own IBIS system for further support while shooting handheld. At first glance, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this Sony lens doesn't have a manual MF to AF switch, but that's only because instead, the manual focus dial is able to slide back and forth to toggle between manual and autofocus, which I actually find really intuitive to use. It's really odd because this hand motion just feels so familiar to me. I just... nope, no idea why. In any case, the manual focus rings on these lenses are buttery smooth and operate without any noticeable lag, meaning they're great for refining critical focus or capturing focus pulls. I should also mention that although both lenses include a rubber o-ring around the lens mount to help keep moisture and dirt out of your camera, the Sony is the only one to feature a proper weather sealed construction for full protection against the elements. When it comes to comparing price, it's probably no big surprise that the Sigma is the cheaper option and you can pick up a copy of this lens online for around £549 or $639. The Sony is a touch more expensive, coming in at around £799 or $998 in the US, but honestly, for the amount of additional features that this thing has, I think it's a very well-priced lens in comparison. Now, although the Sigma is technically the cheapest option here, for what the Sony includes in terms of features, I still think it's a fantastic value for money option, and therefore I'm going to give both of these lenses a point for price. Both lenses are also incredibly well built, so points all round there as well, though when it comes to handling, things do get a little bit more tricky. Although the Sony is larger and heavier, it still feels nicely balanced on the front of my Sony a7 Mark III, and obviously with this additional size and weight comes a whole bunch of cool features, so I do feel that it would be slightly unfair of me to mark it down on points just because of that. So in the spirit of fairness, let's give both of these lenses yet another point in this round. During our autofocus test, in good lighting conditions, both of these lenses were quick to focus with no signs of hunting. In low light conditions, both lenses slowed ever so slightly and took a little bit longer to lock onto the target, but they were still totally usable and neither of them hunted wildly out of control. When shooting wide open at f2.8 in high speed continuous mode, both lenses did a pretty good job of keeping locked onto their target, with the vast majority of the shots being sharp and in focus. So with pretty much identical results from these lenses, both options grab yet another point. When shooting a moving target in video mode at f2.8, both lenses managed to keep locked onto Georgia as she walked towards the camera at a regular pace. When repeating the test at a faster pace, again, both lenses managed to keep locked on throughout the walk. As for AF noise, the Sigma was very quiet, with only a very small amount of mechanical purring being picked up by the camera's built-in microphone. The Sony in comparison was noticeably noisier, with an electronic buzzing sound littering all of the camera's audio. Focus breathing really wasn't an issue for the Sigma, whereas the Sony could quite easily start moonlighting as a zoom lens, the focus breathing was just that bad. But this is pretty standard for a macro lens due to their extreme focusing range, so this really shouldn't come as much of a surprise to anyone. So at the end of this round of testing, I think it's points all round once again. In our Bokeballs test, this is where things started to get slightly different. The Sony created noticeably jagged Bokeballs at the centre that turn into pancake shapes as they near the edges of the frame. Although the Sigma isn't able to provide a perfect result either, the orbs 
it creates are a hell of a lot nicer and much more rounded in comparison. In terms of general bokeh quality though, both lenses provide a nice smooth defocused area. In any case, I think the point in this round has to go to the Sigma as it provides the nicest bokeh balls of the two. Flaring is dealt with pretty well with both of these lenses. Although there is a small amount of ghosting and some artifacting, generally the results are pretty good. Plus, it is worth mentioning that both of these lenses do come included with lens hoods in the box which should help to shade the front element in harsh lighting conditions anyway. Shooting our lens chart wide open at f2.8, the Sigma suffers from pin cushion distortion at the edges, whilst the Sony has a touch of barrel distortion. At the centre of the chart, both of these lenses are nice and sharp, though the Sony is definitely the sharper of the two, providing an image with a touch more contrast as well. At the corners, the Sigma starts to soften slightly, whilst the Sony still offers pretty good sharpness. Now, although the Sigma isn't technically a macro lens, this 90mm can actually focus pretty close up, though when shooting this close up at f2.8, the results are a little bit smudgy with a hint of ghosting. The Sony, on the other hand, can focus ridiculously close up, as you'd expect with a macro lens, and even at f2.8, the results are tack sharp and full of contrast. On a longitudinal chromatic aberration test, the Sigma results were unfortunately very colourful, with cyan fringing at the top, and red fringing at the bottom of the chart. The Sony on the other hand provided some of the cleanest results I have ever collected, with no real colour fringing to complain about. With all of that said, looking at the real life images I've taken with these lenses, when you place them side by side, I really do think that most people would have a really hard time trying to figure out which lens took which image. Obviously the Sony does have the added benefit of being a macro lens, and it was really fun to play around with shooting at these extremely close distances. I'll admit though, for portrait work specifically, this novelty does wear off pretty quickly, but if if you're a photographer or videographer that maybe dabbles in product photography or even nature photography then the Sony would definitely be a much more versatile tool for your camera bag. It's no big secret that I'm a huge fan of 85mm lenses so shooting with this 90mm focal length was just as enjoyable and it creates the same kind of compression that's super flattering for both close-ups and full-length portraits. So after taking a look at these real life images and also taking into consideration the lens chart results, the final point has to go to the Sony, which does mean that we are left with a tie. So going back to the original question, which one is the best? Well, I'm going to have to give you my original answer, which is they're both just entirely different beasts and it's kind of unfair to pick an overall winner. The Sony is arguably the best one to go for if you think you'll benefit from having those additional features such as weather sealing, optical stabilization and macro functionality. Whilst if you're not bothered about that and you'd rather keep your gear small and lightweight then go for the Sigma instead. Anyway if you're interested in buying any of these lenses I have provided Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Any purchases made using these links gives me a small kickback which really goes a long way to supporting the channel so thank you in advance for using those links. Also if you've liked this video and you want to see more lens reviews just like it then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel for more content just like this every single week.